Hey everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another video for assignmentsystamp.com. Today I'm going to be using another collaboration set for Stamp Timber, and this time the collaborating company is Art Impressions. I love Art Impressions. I love Bonnie Krebs, who is the illustrator over there. She does all of their stamp sets. She's a brilliant illustrator. I love her. So I'm excited to use another stamp set from them that is specifically for Stamp Timber over at assignmentsystamp.com. So I'm going to do a little bit of coloring with that image that's in the stamp set for the collaboration and I hope you guys enjoy. Today I have another collaboration stamp timber stamp set to show you guys. This one is called Pumpkin Spice and it's from Art Impressions. It has a great image of these two women talking with their drinks. Could be whatever drink you want it to be. And then it has a fun greeting with it as well. I'm not going to be using the greeting stamp on today's card. Instead, I'll be pairing this image with a greeting from a different Simon Says Stamp stamp set. But that greeting is great for this. It's all about pump, pump, pumpkin spice lattes, right? <laughs> so I'm going to start out by stamping the image onto some white cardstock. This is some Simon Says Stamp 120 pound cardstock. And this is the pre-scored, pre-cut card base. I was planning to have this card be colored directly on the card base, but you'll see that I eventually do cut it down and I'll, I'll tell you why when we get to that point. So I'm using Copic markers today and because of that I stamped the image in intense black ink from Simon and I stamped that a couple of times using my Misty stamp positioning tool so that I could get the lines really, really solid. So I'm starting out by coloring their faces and their hands. Um, I like to just get the skin tones and their blush and their lips and things like that all colored in before I move on to other areas of the image. For the woman on the right, I'm going to give her um, some brown hair, a, a nice medium brunette, nothing too dark. And I was going to just give very easy shading on the hair. Um, as seen on the packaging for the stamp set. But then I decided I wanted to do a, a little bit more brush stroke detail on their hair. So the shading on the hair is a little bit more detailed, but everything else on this entire image is colored very simply. And I use the, the example on the packaging um, to guide me as I did all of my coloring. I really like how Art Impressions always has an example of their images colored on the packaging. I've mentioned this in past videos that I like to reference the shading that they have on those examples because it kind of takes the guesswork when it comes to coloring out of you know the whole process. So it makes it um, just a little bit easier to do all your coloring because there is an example of you know the different light source and the shading in the different areas. To me it just makes it a lot easier because then I don't have to really stop and think about where all of those shadows are. So I'm using mostly autumn colors for this coloring um, since it is uh, kind of pumpkin spice season and she's got a scarf on, they're wearing sweaters. I figured this definitely looks like an image where they would be either either be wearing um, like autumn clothing or even winter clothing. So I'm using an olive green color scheme for the woman on the left and then a nice uh, muted blue for the one on the right and as far as what they're wearing on the bottom I'm going to have them both wearing black on the bottom. I did kind of a more um, bright intense green for her turtleneck on the left and then as far as the scarf goes on this other woman I, I wanted it to be a little bit of a brighter color since everything else on here is very kind of muted. So I thought doing it kind of like an orangey salmon coral color would be really pretty. And after I had it kind of shaded in, I added small dots using the darkest shade just to give it a little bit of a pattern. On the example image from Art Impressions, they do kind of like a plaid pattern, which I think would look awesome, but I decided to do little um, dots so it kind of looks like flowers. The last thing to do is to color those coffee cups. So I had a um, brown on them and then of course the iconic green straws for Starbucks. 
So the, the greeting I'm using today is from the Everything Together stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. And it's going to be positioned up above their heads. And I wanted it to have sort of like a talk bubble shape that it's inside of. So I started to sketch out exactly how I wanted that talk bubble to look. Um, I'm going to be creating a mask and doing some ink blending. So I'm sketching this out, giving a little bit of a curve to the bottom of this talking area. This is a really simple shape to draw. So I thought I would go ahead and use this instead of having to uh, try to find some die cuts or something like that that would be the right size. So I have some masking paper from Simon and it's thin enough that I can see where I've drawn my sketch lines for that shape. So I just placed it over the top and then traced it with my pencil. And this is going to give me the perfect shape to cut out with my scissors so that when I go to mask this, it's going to be the perfect positioning and also the perfect size. So I used my scissors to cut this out. And then I was able to peel off the uh, release paper on the back and place it onto the bottom of this card. Now, like I mentioned before, um, eventually I will be cutting this down, but at this point of the um, card process, I thought I was going to leave it as a card base altogether. So I did take some two inch wide post-it tape and I masked off the back of the card just past the fold to protect the card while I was blending. But um, in hindsight, because hindsight's 2020, I didn't need to have that masking there because I did eventually trim down this entire piece. So I put down my Tonic Easy Clean mat just to help me with my blending and making sure that my work surface doesn't get too messy. And I used some Black Soot Distress Oxide ink and a mini round blending tool to blend on some of this dark, dark gray color. So I'm blending this up here and then I decided I was going to switch to Forest Moss. I thought this would be a nice muted green shade that goes along with the color scheme that I've already got going. And I'm putting that directly over the top of the black soot. And I really like how these colors mixed and blended in with each other, but then also left a lighter area near the top where that forest moss color could really come through. So I'm blending this color on until I have a nice shaded area. And then I'm going to peel off those masks. First going to take off that tape on the side. And then I'm going to peel up the very bottom area. By the way, that a little bit of straight tape that was on the right side, I added that um, mid-blending because it, my uh, foam tool was uh, pulling up that one corner on the mask and I just needed to have it stick down again. So I'm peeling this off really carefully. And then I used my heat tool to make sure that this area was completely dry because I'm gonna do some heat embossing over top. And so I needed to test it out to make sure that this embossing powder wasn't going to stick to that green and black ink. So I'm using some copper embossing powder from WOW and it was still sticking just a tiny bit so then I wiped off that powder and hit, hit it with my heat tool once again. And I just did that kind of test run to make sure that it was completely dry. So after that it was ready for stamping so I inked up that Let's Catch Up Soon stamp in Versamark ink and then pressed that down right into that blended area. I'll sprinkle on some of this copper embossing powder and then I can tap off the excess. And I'll use my heat tool to heat set this until it's smooth and melted. And it gives this really nice copper shine to this area and I thought that copper color would go really well with the autumn colors. So I did eventually trim this down as you can see, um, I thought there was just a little too much space up and around that greeting area. So I thought it needed to be trimmed down a little bit and then mounted onto a card base. So I used some Nina Desert Storm environmental cardstock and then I pressed it down with some foam adhesive. I hope you guys loved that card. It was a lot of fun to put together. And just a reminder, if you want to get this stamp set, you might want to act quickly because these collaboration sets are limited quantity, limited supply. So you want to get those before they sell out. 
Before you go, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell before you go so that you never miss another video. And give, the, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That lets me know you liked it and you wanna see more just like this. On screen, I've got two more cards for you that use Art Impressions images or Art Impressions stamps. I did a whole week of Art Impressions not that long ago, so I'll link to a couple of those down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in another video very soon.